God put sex in place to keep you from temptation, to keep you from being unfulfilled, to keep you from being in the problems that a lot of marriages are in. It's because they don't have a good sex life. Right. Sex should be a very important part of your life if you're married, and you should be experiencing it often with enjoyment, not going around frustrated. Sex is something that you owe your partner. And you shouldn't have control over it. Remember that. Number three. The myth is, I need to experiment with multiple partners. I mean, a lot of people in our society today feel like their goal is to have sex with as many people as they can have sex with. Would you say that's a normal thing in our society? Yes. People talk about sex casually. People go out and meet people casually. People meet people <laughs> online casually and go have sex with them. People go out to clubs, pick them up. People meet them here and there. And they just have sex with people they don't really know. I mean, it's not a big deal in making on any given night, or especially the weekend, for people to go out and meet people they never met before and have sex with them. It's not a big deal for that to take place. Would you agree with that? Because they've lowered the value of sex so much that it's no big deal. The myth is the more partners I have sex with, the more fulfilled I'm going to be and the more I'm going to enjoy myself and, and I'm going to be really good at sex. I'm going to have so many partners that I'm going to be a sex daddy or a sex mama or a maniac or whatever. It's so degraded that it's not even called sex anymore. You want to hook up? <laughs> and he used to, it was okay, you know, like, I'm going to date you a long time. We're not going to wait till we get married, but, you know, it's just going to be me and you, and we're going to know it's going to be me and you, and, and we're going to have sex, and it's going to be okay. <clears throat> then it was, okay, and we're going to go steady. If we're going steady, we can have sex, okay? So, all right, let's go steady. Okay, it's going to be, I'm going to take you out on a couple of dates. We're not going to actually go steady, but we're going, to, we're going to be dating. So, okay, we're going to have sex. All right, that's cool. Okay, look, I'm not actually going to date you. We're going to go out on a date. I'm going to take you out on a date. I'm going to treat you real nice, and you're going to treat me real nice. And at the end of the night, we already know we're going to have sex. Okay, is that cool with you? Yeah, that's good with me. Okay, okay look, I'm not going to take you out. I'm going to buy you a drink. Okay, I'm going to buy you two drinks, that's a two drink limit, and then we're going to have sex. Is that okay with you? That's okay with me. Okay, all right, look, I'm not buying you nothing. And I don't even want to spend my whole night with you. I mean, I, I got friends and stuff, and we go in places, and, and I, got, I want to hang out with them. And so what I do is I text you at a certain time, and if you can hit me back, we'll hook up. <laughs> But I gotta go right after that cause the boys is waiting. All my girls. All my girls. <laughs> and then you're, people are right down the road texting, what do you know? I'm fixing to hook up with Billy in about 15 minutes and now I'll check y'all in 30 minutes back at the place. <laughs> and then it's got, you know, even more than that is you're not gonna get any of my time. When I get done hanging out with my friends and you get done hanging out with your friends, I'm going to get a late night booty call. Little text, hey, you in? I'm in, okay, hey, I'll see you in a minute. All right, boom. And that's where it's come in our lives. And if anybody in here does not believe that, you haven't been out in a while. The truth is, that's, that's the myth, that it's okay to do that. The truth is that sex is a blood cover. Sex is the only blood covenant that we still participate in as a New Testament church. When a man and a woman who are both virgins come together for the first time, 
There is a blood covenant bond that is made between the two of those people. That can never be taken back. It can never be experienced with another person. It's a one-time shot. And in God's perfect world, that one-time shot is to be between two people that will be together from now on. It is the most sacred, valuable thing next to your soul that God gives you control of. When you and your spouse come together, and I got three daughters, my goal is to put my daughter's hand. Now, you know, I got people that tell me, you know, you're up getting grown, they ain't pretty, you know, they're going to do stuff, yada, yada, yada. Hey, you know, you can't be uh, stopping them all the time today. Hey, boy, it's going to lie. Right? You don't know all the crap I've heard over and over and over. But I'm telling you guys, listen to me, I work out three times a week so that I am ready. I got a nine millimeter with a laser on it. I got several shotguns. I go skeet shooting. I am pretty doggone good at hitting something that big around moving at about 50 miles an hour. So if you're fast, come on. <laughs> hey, watch out. Hey, funny. See, that's the way people get hurt in church right there. See, I have walked cues before, young man, in the Holy Ghost. I'm like David, I can jump over a wall and run through an arm. <laughs> but I'm not stupid. I know they're going to get grown. I know things are going to happen. I know what's going on. But my goal is to be able to hand their hand into someone else's hand and say, here, I did my job. Now you do your job. <coughs> I'm giving you what I have protected and shielded their entire life since God gave it to me. And I would expect you to do the same. And if you ain't man enough to do that, don't take this hand. Because it cost me a lot to get her to this point. A lot. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's God's plan. Now that didn't happen for me. Because I didn't have a father that viewed sex that way. But thank God, He's opened my eyes to it. And I want to be able to give something to them that they can give to somebody. When that happens, that bond cannot be easily broken. When a man and a woman come together as husband and wife, and that's the first person they've had sex with and the first time they've had it, that's hard to break. They can weather some storms now. They can go through some things now because they have kept themselves for each other and they have created something valuable. Now, that's how God created. And I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad here today because that didn't happen for me and Sheila. We wish it did. But we're trying our best to make sure it happens for our daughters. And for you and me, that's what we've got to... That's God's original intent. Where it's at today is where the world's taking it to. We as the church got to at least try to pull it back. Would you agree with that? It's a covenant between two people. But myth number four. Everybody's doing it. Everybody's doing it. I mean, it seems like everybody's doing it. Have y'all ever heard, realized that? It seems like everybody's having sex. Everybody's running around their spouses. Everybody's involved in in adultery, everybody's involved in something, and, and it's just a matter of time before you find out about it. Everybody's doing it. Th that's the myth. The truth is that an active sex life helps us overcome temptation. 